I'm a Christian who became an anarchist during my first of seven trips to Israel-Palestine in June 2005. Now, anarchy is best understood as rebellion against unjust laws. The yang, or male force of anarchy, resists authority and causes disorder and is socially and politically incorrect by the norms of the status quo for it seeks the higher ground of justice. The yin, or feminine force of anarchy, births a new order out of that chaos, and chaos is creativity in action. The gospel, which means good news, that Jesus preached was very political and a direct challenge to the politically powerful and the arrogant, self-satisfied, self-righteous teachers of the law. 2,000 years ago, the cross had no symbolic religious meaning, and it was not a piece of jewelry. When Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me, everyone back then understood he was issuing a political statement, for the main roads into Jerusalem were lined with crucified agitators, rebels, dissidents, any who disturbed the status quo of the empire and the Roman occupying forces. And by the way, Jesus was never a Christian. The term Christian was not even coined until the days of Paul, about three decades after Jesus walked the earth. Jesus was born, lived, and died a non-violent Palestinian devout Jew, and he was also a social justice radical, revolutionary road warrior who rose up and challenged the job security of the temple hierarchy by teaching the people they didn't need the to pay the priests for ritual baths or sacrificing livestock to be okay with God, for God already loved them just as they were. Poor, diseased, outcasts, widows, orphans, refugees, prisoners, all living under a brutal military occupation. What God Jesus crucified was disturbing the status quo of the empire by teaching the subversive concept that God preferred the humble sinner, the poor, diseased, outcasts, widows, orphans, refugees, and prisoners living under occupation above the elite and arrogant. The early followers and lovers of Jesus were called members of the way, being the way he taught one should be, nonviolent, and do the will of the Father. In Micah 6, 8, we learned, what does God require? He's already told you, old man, be just, be merciful, and walk humbly with your Lord. Christians usually agree that God is love, and as Dorothy Day, 20th century Christian anarchist said, love is not the starving of whole populations. Love is not the bombardment of open cities. Love is not killing. Our manifesto is the Sermon on the Mount, which means we will try to be peacemakers. Jesus promised, blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God, not those that bomb, occupy, or torture any other. When Jesus said, you must be born again, he was talking about a transformation of heart and mind to see the divine in oneself, all others, all of creation, and in every situation. Jesus challenged those who ignored and those who tried to suppress the truth. He promised, you shall know the truth, the truth will set you free. What American Christians need to know that the truth in the Holy Land this year is that internationals were able to visit Jerusalem during Holy Week and Easter, but the indigenous Christians of the West Bank were again denied access by the wall that keeps Palestinians in an open-air prison that is paid for by over 1.5 million American tax dollars per mile, and it is illegal under international law, wherever it does not follow the green line, and that's most everywhere. There are over 600 military checkpoints that block the way for Palestinians to reach their natural resources, families, jobs, and holy sites. All roads, seaport, airport, controlled by the state of Israel. Over $7 million every day of American taxes 
are spent in the name of Israel's security. Over 24,000 Palestinian homes and apartment buildings have been demolished by the state of Israel, and they have also destroyed over 1 million trees and wiped from the map 531 Palestinian villages. Much more on all of these topics and more at wearewideawake.org through the month of April 2010. This is Eileen Fleming, seven-time sojourner to Israel-Palestine, author, founder, and senior correspondent of wearewideawake.org, producer of 30 Minutes with Venunu and 13 Minutes with Venunu. In solidarity, we have it in our power to begin the world again. Power to the peaceful. Happy Easter.